Good afternoon. And this is it. This is the thousandth Facebook Live. <laughs> Finally going live on Facebook. Finally going into the four digits. So the thousandth Facebook Live. Actually, I probably should be accurate. I've done a few more Facebook Lives that weren't in this sequence. This is the thousandth Facebook Live in the Messages from the Masculine from FTM um, theme. That I've been doing this for the last three years. And it's going to be my final daily one for now. I'm taking a break. Um, probably do weekly and I may do some special stuff. I was just watching my friend Katie do her broadcast and she and I are talking about doing um, some talking about human design because we're both fascinated students of it. We have a master teacher we've been studying with, I've been studying with for, for a year or so now, but we're going to be talking about that separately. Anyway, so welcome to my broadcast. This is my daily Facebook Live, the last one for a while. <laughs> Episode 1000, yes. Um, and the topic today is about really being blunt. I'm talking about emotional maturity and I'm talking about, talking about growing up and I'm, be, I'm being blunt but also being reminding you because so many people so many people um are still running the blame game which is part of what i talk about emotional maturity so i want to get into that in a minute but before i do that though, i'm gonna do a little recap as i've done a thousand broadcasts there's a little bit to talk about um i will tell you at the back end of the broadcast where you can find the replays of my broadcast because i have them all archived away safely not all in the same place because some strange things happened anyway i'll tell you about that in a moment and later on um, I may put some links in the comments, I'm not sure yet, depending on what comes up, but I want to talk about today about emotional maturity because when it comes to relationships, it becomes to, when it comes to being around yourself, you can live a lot happier and a lot more aligned when you stay in emotional maturity. Now, what do I mean by emotional maturity? Emotional maturity means basically growing up. It also means when you look about relationships and about love, you stop acting like a teenager. That's the title, but I want to break that down in more contextual and effective tools. Okay? All right. So emotional maturity, which, which is something that we can all learn better at, including me. I've done a lot of work on it, but we all can learn more about how to be this. The biggest part about emotional maturity, hey, Katie, nice to see my broke. <laughs> I was like trying to watch yours and I was like, I've got to get off to get onto mine. And yes, we will talk, you and me and, and, um, and Lauren will talk um, at some point. Yes, thousandth live, thousandth live in this series. I mean, I've done other Facebook lives as well because I did other challenges where I was doing broadcasts in like in the Facebook live challenge group in parallel to my own one. So I've probably done about 11 or 1200 broadcasts all together, but 1000 in this sequence. So these are documented um, and listed. And I'll tell you again at the end where you find the replays. So emotional maturity, to get back to the topic at hand, is probably one of the most overlooked things when it comes to relationships. It's one of the most overlooked things about living life in a contextual way. Because a, a blatant example is when people you might know, not you, but people you might know, get very caught up in the paradigm of... Um, right wrong around the politics actually right wrong is a as a piece in general when you're attached to being right versus being happy being loving being calm being at peace that's a clue that you're not being emotionally mature when you're in a place of righteousness like i'm right they're wrong or i'm wrong they're right even that whole thing is a trap we fall into in relationships especially in business relationships and family dynamics often romantic ones too so this is going to be a um a useful tool in all areas so don't just restrict it to romance because it can come any very other places too second piece of this is when we get to place I said about being the blame game when you got bent out of shape and I've talked about this in many times in my broadcast over the last three years about being caught up in the paradigm of codependency where we think that it's the other person's responsibility to make us feel okay that so doesn't work being caught up in the paradigm of feeling like somehow they're going to make my life better and when they don't, it's their fault is an extremely childish way to look at things. And I mean emotional maturity, childish, not necessarily age child, child, uh, childish. The thing for me about emotional maturity is one of the biggest benefits is you're no longer enmeshed in other people's needs and other people's um, requirements for your life to be okay. To have freedom in your life would require emotional maturity because when you do that you bring yourself back to a place of presencing and a place of ownership that you're um can I say it in a nice way your understanding of how life works realizes that you actually have control over your, how you feel because really what i'm talking about when, when i speak about emotional maturity is you have mastery over how you feel now if you had been in a place where the political um grandstanding was the word that came up but the politics of the country have knocked you off center, that's a clue that maybe you're not as emotionally mature as you could be. If you're caught up in the paradigm where your family dynamics, maybe you're getting a call from one of your relatives or your parents or your siblings or your kids, 
and it's knocking you off center, that's another indication that you're not being emotionally mature because what's happening is you're being caught in a codependent trap because other people's expressions are simply that. They're other people's expressions. Oh, thank you, Katie, for sharing me with all your friends. I appreciate that. Thanks for the love. Um, that's a lot of people you've invited. Thank you. I appreciate that. With this understanding that we are absolutely fundamentally autonomous beings, whole, complete as we are. If you don't know that, surprise, <laughs> we are. It gives you the understanding. Hey, Phoenix, thanks for the love. Um, codependency, yes, codependency is a real thing. And this is, the, this is the piece I want to get to, is that codependency is, the, is the, the, the need to feel validated by something else. Something, I said, not somebody, because it's not just people, it's in other things too. Understanding that who we are is independent of that but then we forget and we then become um, entangled with other people's feelings, other people's actions, especially in relationships, can be very disheartening because we end up being in the place like a puppet on strings where we actually feel um, positive or negative based upon what somebody else does or doesn't do. Now, you may have remembered your past relationships or family dynamics with parents, especially. I had that one growing up where I would feel somehow responsible for their feelings on one side of things. And secondly, that how they felt would impact my mood. Now, I'm not alone in this, I'm sure. Many people have had the experience. And every falling in the trap of feeling that somehow that that's not your fault, you have to put up with it, is, yeah, thank you, Katie, for the milestones. I appreciate it, and Kate and Phoenix. This trap we fall into is unnecessary. For some of us, we think somehow we have loyalty to our parents, especially, or to romantic partners, that when they get upset, we need to be somehow um, blaming ourselves for it. It's really insane now because I come from a Jewish background so the, the guilt thing is big in my, in my upbringing. Same as the Catholic faith is different both times too. But recognizing more powerfully than ever that, that feeling guilty, feeling resentful, feeling judgmental, all these different things are not required. Now, let me qualify this. <laughs> let, I'm speaking about emotional maturity not emotional um, absence. So there are people out there who don't feel anything and don't feel attached, upset, distressed, annoyed or anything because they have no emotional context at all. I'm speaking about human beings here, people who actually feel emotions. So, no, 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 Phoenix, I don't have, a, don't have a buyer ring. These are regular rings. These are just regular jewelry. They don't have any special special powers. Yeah, talk, talk to Katie. She's all about that, that buyer ring. I've, 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 I had to look online for it. So, yes, no squirrel. Thank you for that, Phoenix. <laughs> so, and this, see, here's right there's an example. I enjoyed that interaction, but I didn't get distracted by it. Because the thing about these distractions is it can easily be something that could trigger people to get upset. I know in my past, many years ago, that being distracted by things can somehow disturb my peace. With years of practice and in and inner focus and a lot of work I've done myself with my spiritual studies, I've learned more and more to be centered in a place that is more like a cork on an ocean, energetically speaking. Where things can happen and I move along with the flow versus being um, a rock that gets battered by the outside feelings. This is part of emotional maturity. And getting back to what I was saying earlier about the codependent trap, we get so enmeshed with other people. Yes, anger flares up exactly. That's the thing. When you get his, his let me give you this. This is a clue. <laughs> if you're getting triggered by things around you, that's a clue that maybe you're not as emotionally present, emotionally mature as you could be. Recognizing that you can actually be responsive versus reactive, which is a big differentiation, by the way, gives you freedom to choose how you want to respond at your own timing and it gives you your power back. Because codependency, codependency is, is abdicating your own power. In fact, codependency is a limiting way of living life that it will deplete your energy completely if you don't do something about it. This is why I'm so passionate about this and why I say grow up. <laughs> it's kind of an like, ad, ad, admonishment. Also a reminder, because codependency is something you can let go of. Thank you, Lauren, appreciate that. This is, happy one, it's like, it's not a happy birthday, but it's an interesting way to talk about it. But understanding that you have the power, the authority, the ownership, the ability, the um, responsibility to take ownership of your feelings, to be emotionally mature, gives you an ability to see the world through a lens that is absolutely clean, so that you're not reactive to what's happening. You get to respond as you choose to. Now, this is a this is advanced work for a lot of people. I understand. For many people, being reactive is the only choice they have, the only way they know to be. And I'm speaking about here is raising the bar for those who want to play this game, so to speak, the game of life, to bring a different level of participation 
into your relationships, your families, your work situations, your environment, the participation, the politics, everything around you. Where what happens is something you get to look at from a place of a witness consciousness. That's really one of my skills and one of my gifts. So I can choose to respond as I want to versus going immediately into reaction mode because something happened. Now, <laughs> one area I still have a certain challenge with um, is being cut off on the freeway. <laughs> this is one of my, my advice that I've been working on is when you're on the road driving, when someone cuts you up, or worst case, when you come out to your car and somebody drives by and swipe the side of your car. Now, being in LA, cars are very prevalent. Some other places, not so much, but LA definitely is a car-based environment. It can be a very dis, um, distressing, is probably the word, I was gonna use another word, but distressing seems to work best. So understanding that even that can be a, a reminder to stay tuned inside, to turn inside, and to be more centered is a way to handle everything. Because the thing is this, Someone swipes your car, your pride and joy as they drive, and, and maybe it did it when you weren't even there. Like he, he was, he was hit and run, you never saw it. Being upset, distressed, hurt feelings, judgmental, blaming, resentful with different things about somebody you can't even don't even know, is absolutely ineffective. It may feel good for a moment, and if you want to immerse yourself in it for a few minutes, go ahead. But understand that it doesn't change anything. The damage is still done. So then, could you be proactive and responsive? And look how you can resolve the situation versus sitting in the upset and hurt feelings. Now, we are human beings. Well, I talk about we spiritual beings having a human experience. But being human does um, provide the space when we're in breakups after relationships or breakup for losing a job or having something happen where you have something stolen to feel, sad, feel sorry for yourself. And I'm not saying you should never do that. Because part of emotional maturity, I believe, is including the ability to feel emotional when it's not pleasant. The thing is, though, if you want to, if you want to immerse yourself in it and live there for months and months and months, that's when you start getting into a very un um, um, what's the word I'm for? Um, an immature place. That's the way I put it. So understanding that emotional maturity is not to be immune or um, impervious to the world. Far from it. Emotional maturity means that you handle emotions from a much more aware place. Because the thing about emotional maturity is that switching, switching from reactive to responsive is a huge change in people's lives. When you understand that your emotions are under your dominion and you can choose to respond as you want versus when something happens and you get distressed, upset, angry, knocked out of center, that's a change of perspective and it will change your life. Your centeredness is really a powerful place to be when you own it and respect it. And that's emotional maturity. There's a few other places I can go with this. I'm just thinking of the things I want to talk about because it's a journey. Emotional maturity is not something I talk about lightly because I've been on this path for a long time and I've been learning and still learning ways of doing it better and relearning lessons that have come up more than once because stuff happens. Now, being in a relationship is a place where you can really let the walls down. Being in a relationship is where the place we can really let down the boundaries so you can be much more into it somebody. But know this, if you give away your power so the other person has control of your feelings, you've crossed the line into codependency. Your opportunity, your um, mission if you choose to accept it, is to choose relationships or to be in relationships where if something happens, you get to, to, you get to have a, it's almost like having um, a, <laughs> <laughs> it's like having a tape delay when they do TV shows to, to swap people those seven words you can't say on national TV. You know, those things, that was George Carlin's thing. But certain words they can't say on TV, so they bleep them. The way they bleep those words on TV is because they have a time delay from when something is said to when it's aired. It's kind of the same thing. Yes, boundaries are definitely an opportunity. Yes, Katie. The idea is basically is the same thing in your emotions. If something happens in the world that comes at you. Sometimes it's like you bristle and you react and, well, maybe it's just me. I think we all do this. You just bristle and react without any thinking about it. And by the time you stop to think about it, you may have hit somebody you shouldn't have hit, damaged something you shouldn't have damaged, hurt yourself, but it's something you shouldn't have done. Sorry, would best not have done. Don't want to say should, but you best not have done. But if you have this ability to have almost like this tape delay in your mind or in your heart, when something happens to you, you go, okay, I can count to three before I react. Can I do something differently? Because one of the biggest powers, the biggest gifts we have is the ability to not react. Not to be steamrolled, but to respond differently. Because, for example, if somebody does something that upset you, rather than retaliating and reacting because that's the way you're normally programmed to do, and you go, you know what? I'm going to walk away. 
and you do that, in a way, you win. Not I'm saying you can get brownie points for winning or losing, but you don't end up being enmeshed in the problem and the challenge in the relationship. Any relationship that does that. One of the things that I was, and this is a sidebar piece, but it's something I basically learned from Alison Armstrong, talks about for, the, for a masculine man with a, with a feminine woman, how to be with her when she's in upset and distress. This is kind of a similar thing, only different. So I'll explain the difference afterwards. So the way she talks about it is when a woman's upset, a man's job is, is one thing only, which is to stand present and be present for her. The things he doesn't do for her when she's upset and venting and yelling and, and releasing is one, try to fix it, not a good thing. Two, try to shut it down, not a good thing. And three, walk away, also not a good thing. Staying present is the thing. And it's a training ground, because I, did, I didn't grow up around um, yelling and screaming in my childhood, not, not that I remember anyway. So that's always been a thing I've been growing into, and it's my learning edge in a way, is to be able to be present when a woman is upset and not react. So that's my personal growing edge. But understanding when someone's upset and you can stay present with them and not buy into the upset or not try to fix it. Now, again, this is a masculine thing. It's a male thing. We try to fix problems and we want to solve our problems, especially with our girlfriend or a partner, wife, whatever that is, because that upset is absolutely um, ineffective ultimately. So learning how to be in a place of presence in somebody's upset and not be affected by it on a place that knocks you out of center massively, being stay present with them and hold the space in your heart, big one, this one, to stay present with somebody's in their upset from your heart can actually be very healing. So your emotional maturity not only gives you freedom to choose versus re and, and re respond versus react, but also become a healing presence for other people around you. Emotional maturity is a powerful place to own. It's a, it's a, it's a definitely a grown up place to be, not a kid's place to be. So definitely grow up in this one. And it will challenge you because there are people out there who know your buttons and they'll try and push on them. But if you know yourself well enough, those buttons become disconnected. So when they push on them, they don't affect you. And again, not that you're a robot or immune to all of this stuff. You become reflexive and responsive and choose to respond as you need to. And you get to decide what that is. This is the big work. And I'm going to go into this deeper in my own, in my coaching with my clients and in my next broadcast probably, because again, this is my final daily broadcast for a while. I may do weekly. I'm not sure yet. Just, just basically just, so you know, tomorrow night I probably won't be going live at this time. I could, probably, I could maybe do it anyway, but I'm not committing to that. So this is my thousandth broadcast in a row my Facebook lives called Messages from the Masculine. That's what the MFTM stands for. And so this is something that's a much bigger topic than doing one broadcast, but I will give you some seeds to plant you can take with you and use yourself. If you want to get some more help in this area, please reach out to me. I have a lot of products and programs and guidance and counseling and counseling I can offer, but I want you to take this to heart. You have the ability to own, embrace, and honor your own emotions. And in so doing, you can mature into a place where emotional mastery can, excuse me, emotional maturity, can, that's, that's a different conversation. <laughs> Thank you, Katie. Emotional maturity becomes a way of life versus an occasional experience. So, hey, Jerry, Jerry, thank you for that. Yes, my thousandth broadcast. So this is the final one of my dailies for a while. I'm gonna take a break because um, my 5 p.m. has always been booked and I don't have to do other things very much. So I'm gonna be more free for the next few days. But as I said before, I'm gonna put some other talks out there. Follow me on Facebook. My personal page, oh, and I can tell you where you find the replays of my thousand broadcasts, you can watch them. Um, but again, if you have any questions, comments, put them below or send me a message over social media. And uh, if you've got questions about how to be, how to work this emotional stuff, I can help you with that. So let me know. Um, so if you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily, has been, <laughs> excuse me, up till today, my daily Facebook Live. Um, been doing this now again for three years, hence this is number thousand broadcast. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, um, if you want to watch my future broadcasts as randomly as they show up, we'll see how often that is. Make sure you follow me on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. You can find me there. Um, if you haven't seen the broadcast before and you want to watch the replays, I do keep them archived. I will continue to keep them archived on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author, where all of them are saved, but not all of them are visible. Um, Facebook has, has been, doesn't sit, it's like photo albums when they're over a certain size, it only shows the most recent ones. So my Facebook lives, all thousand of them, you may see two or three hundred there now. Three of those broadcasts are only there because I didn't, couldn't get, couldn't, have not been able to download them yet, which is like 993, 4, and 5, something like that. So all the old ones are over there. However, I do have a backup plan. Um, excuse me, 993, 94, 95 are there, but they're not on my YouTube channel. All my broadcasts are visible on my YouTube channel. So we go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my channel. 
There's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine, which is the MFTM, and all of my broadcasts except those three are listed from newest to oldest. And those you can find easily because YouTube's easy to sort through. You can find titles, keywords that speak to you and watch any of my broadcasts. They will be there in, perpe in perpetuity. Um, I'm not gonna remove them anytime soon. Now, can't promise social media to be the same, but that's where you can watch them in, bro in broadcast archives there. So again, questions, reach out to me. Um, I'll see you again at some point on Facebook Live. I've got some other things brewing. In fact, Katie and I have got some um, talks we're brewing for next week, uh, maybe later this week too, but it'll be different from this. That's why this sequence, this, this journey, um, is coming to an end at the moment. It might renew, it might restore, I'm not sure yet, but I'm saying for, saying adios for now. So my continual sign-up and my reminder to you um, is please, is take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon, somewhere along the line. Now find me on my personal page on Facebook and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care of yourself. And uh, once again, um, have a great time, enjoy life, love more, live more, celebrate. And uh, I'll see you around. <laughs>